Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through activity 3-7 titled Configuring DHCP Failover. This is from the MCSA Guide to Configuring Advanced Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 Services in preparation of exam 70-412. In my edition of the book, this activity begins in the bottom half of page 105. Um, if you're going to be doing this and following along um, with the video here, you're going to need at least two servers. So I have one server as my primary here, a second server here, and then you're going to need a DHCP client, whether that's Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows 10, um, something that can act as a DHCP client. Um, so a quick overview about what we're going to be doing in this activity. Um, we want our servers to be able to hand out DHCP addresses, so IP addresses on our network for IPv4. And we want to have a kind of a backup in case one of our servers goes down and can no longer hand out DHCP addresses. We want the other one to pick up and still maintain the network that way. Um, so to begin, we need DHCP installed on both of the servers, um, but the scope only needs to be on our primary for the moment. Let me go ahead and get DHCP opened up on both here. So here's my primary server, server 1. And we see that we have an active scope. And then in server 2, we have DHCP installed, but it doesn't have any scopes in it yet. And so with server 1 being our primary, we're also going to set it as the primary, and then server 2 is going to be our hot standby in this case. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started on server 1. We want to right click on our scope and select configure failover. Um, if you have multiple scopes, they'll all be listed, and I think by default they'll all be selected. Um, if you have multiple scopes and you want to pick and choose, you can do so and just select specific scopes um, for failover. From here, we need to identify the second or the backup server that we're going to be using, which in my case is server 2. I'm going to go ahead and use Active Directory to find it. You could also use the IP address of the server if you don't have Active Directory set up, um, or if your DNS isn't working properly or you're having any problems there, you can do it by IP address. Um, here, um, the relationship name is how it's going to show. Um, by default, it's the full domain name of your primary, and I think in most cases it's the full domain name, fully qualified domain name of the second as well. Um, so you may want to shorten that down. So we'll do like server1, to server 2, and so server 1 being my primary will come first, server 2 being the hot standby will be second, in my name at least. Um, the client lead time is, it does two things. Um, so first, it defines the maximum amount of time that a DHCP server can give a lease out, give an IP address out to a client, without the other server's knowledge. Um, that's kind of important because if one server goes down, this um, maximum client lead time controls how long the remaining server can give out IP addresses. Um, it'll also define the amount of time that, that the up server will wait before assuming complete control of DHCP services. Um, so if my primary server goes down, for one hour, in this case, my second server will pick up all DHCP services, um, and my secondary server will just assume that my first server is no longer operational for whatever reason, and so it'll handle all of the DHCP. Um, we have two mode options here. Load balance, which is where you'd probably want to split the scope 50-50, um, and the alternative is hot standby, where which is what I'm going to be doing here, where my primary will be handling pretty much everything, and if it goes down, then my secondary will pick up and handle DHCP. And here in the hot standby configuration, the role of the partner server, 
since I'm doing this on server 1, the partner is going to be the standby. And we can set a, a percentage of addresses reserved for that standby server. Um, once my standby server um, leases all of the addresses reserved for it, it can't continue to hand out new reservations or new IP addresses. Um, it can renew existing IP addresses, but it won't be able to hand out new addresses. So depending on the size of your network, you may want to make that just a little bit larger. Um, it's really dependent on how many devices you have um, coming into your network uh, on a consistent rate. The state switchover interval here. Um, this allows each server to operate independently if communication between them is interrupted for any reason. So if they can no longer communicate with each other for, in this case, 60 minutes, after 60 minutes of not being able to communicate with each other, both of them will act as a standalone DHCP server. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that disabled. Um, and message authentication is an additional security step um, where we can make sure that their DHCP information that's being shared between them um, is a little bit more secure. And to do that, we'd have to set up a shared secret on both servers. All right, so let me verify that I'm following the instructions here in the book. All right, so the instructions in the book do want us to use the state switchover interval at 60 minutes, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, but we are not going to worry about the message authentication. So we're going to go ahead and hit Next. We will verify our configuration and hit Finish. And it'll go and it'll automatically configure our hot standby server for the scope. So we're going to go ahead and look at server 2 now. We'll go ahead and refresh. And we can see that that scope is now on this server. If you look into the address pool, it has the correct scope, um, the correct ranges, 100 through 254, which is what I have set up on my primary server. So it gets the exact same scope. And if we look under our address leases, we already have our Windows 8 client picking up a DHCP address. So it is picking up DHCP, and now server 2 even knows what the IP address is for that machine. And it's getting that from server 1, because server 1's actually the server, the DHCP server that handed out the address. So server 2 is the hot standby, still knows about the addresses that have been leased. It's just not active in the leasing process right now. All right, so we are going to verify that we can remove that lease. So on our DHCP client, whatever you're using, go ahead and release the IP address. We see we no longer have an IPv4 address. And if we refresh our DHCP consoles, we see that that address is no longer shown, the machine is no longer shown. Um, it no longer has an address from that scope. So we'll go ahead and have it pick up a new address. And it might take a moment or two. Alright, so we get the exact same address again, and that's fine. We'll go ahead and refresh, and we see it come back up. It looks like that covers everything for the activity. If you want to actually go ahead and test your DHCP failover, have your Win8 machine release, or your DHCP client release the address, and then just power down or disable 
your primary server. If I can get mine to cooperate here. And so server 2 should recognize that server 1 it is no longer in communication with server 2. So there's no communication to um, keep DHCP fully functional on server 1 anymore. Um, so it's going to start handling some of the DHCP um, until it can restore communications with server 1. So I'm going to wait until this server is completely down. And then we'll test to see that our DHCP client can get an address from our hot standby server. Alright, so DHCP should be down by now. So let's go ahead and try to pick up another address. And it may still get the exact same address, but it will be getting it from DHCP. What does that? Wait for server 1 to shut down. Alright. So it did pick up an IPv4 address. It's in that top 5% that we had reserved for our, our hot standby server. So it's the last 5% of addresses available in this scope. And if we look on server 2 and refresh our leases, we see that server 2 has continued handing out DHCP addresses. So that's a good way to test it. Um, And I think that covers everything and a little more now. So, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and I will try to reply in a timely fashion. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.